coach, like you said, you're, you're, you're coming in uh, first year head coach at this program at JMU. Uh, but at the same time, I'm sure you had a lot of stuff to do in the off season, but how has the COVID-19 impacted that in, impacted your progress and in, in the challenges and obstacles you had to face? Well, the biggest challenge that I had was I wasn't around my team when I took the job. And so it, whether we were returning players or players that recruited, so it was extremely unique in that because you want to be around guys day to day and build relationships. And that was really difficult. Um, so we had to try to do it just the same way, you know, through Zoom calls and, and different times we, we talk on the phone. And, and um, you know, it was so odd. We brought in eight new players. And seven of the new players that we brought in, the first time they met me face-to-face or saw the campus at JMU was when they came a couple weeks ago. So, um, you know, that's, that's strange with not having official visits and meeting the head coach and things like that. So, um, you know, and fast forward now, you know, it's, you know we, we've had really good work in the summer. And we're, luckily, we were able to get the guys back here in the middle of July and we're able to kind of start building that relationship and building that bond. Coach, uh, during that during the pandemic, you know, everyone had to kind of hit the pause button a little bit, and, and like you said, in regards to seeing people in person, and and I know a coach's off season is usually really never an off season. The grind is always going, especially when you're starting at a new program. But did you ever have any time to do anything different this off season, maybe compared to other off seasons? Were you able to catch up on a new Netflix show or a new book, or just is it just more time with family? Yeah, yeah, probably, you know, it was different. Um, you know, July, normally we're on the road the entire month recruiting. And, and so that's been the, the strangest thing is I sleep in my own bed, you know, for the last four months. And usually you're recruiting, you're in, you're out. Um, but, you know, one thing is, you know, I'm, I was down in where it's really, really hot in Georgia in the summer and getting up here to Virginia. My son and I were able to do a lot more outdoor things and, um, you know, able to hike and um, I've tried to mountain bike and do different things like that. So um, I fished. And uh, so we were able to do some outdoor things, um, you know, a little bit more family time. Um, but I think it's kind of helped us catch up basketball wise, too, because, you know, finishing last place in the league, I mean, we got a lot of teams got to catch in front of us. And having a new staff and, and me being new and everything else, I think without having the craziness of everything in the typical college world, um, it gave us some family time, but also gave us a time to try to catch up a little bit. Coach, let's talk a little basketball. Uh, obviously, Matt Lewis kind of being the headliner, especially this offseason, deciding to return to the program after testing the waters in the NBA a little bit. Uh, just uh, talk about him, his impact on the team, and some of the newcomers that you have coming in as well as you start to see start seeing your team together here. Yeah, you know, it's been fun coaching Matt. And, um, you know, we built a relationship over the months even before we got him on the court. And, um, you know, when you watch him practice and his work ethic, I mean, I, I knew he was good. He's probably better than I thought. Um, he's, he's actually um, – he's really good with the ball in his hands. And I think his reputation in the past at JMU has been, you know, a dynamic score and, um, you know, has some huge scoring games. But um, he's really smart and makes cerebral plays and – and, and knows when to be aggressive, when to get others involved. So um, it's, it's been great to be around him and watch his progression. And, and uh, he, you know, he's going to have a special senior year. And, um, and then, you know, we got two other guys that are going to be in that senior class. One's a grad transfer. Um, but with Zach Jacobs, you know, he's had, had some really good games last year. Um, he's, you know, getting into shape and doing things. And um, I, I like his versatility. And Rashawn Fredericks is a grad transfer from UAB. And he just got to campus two days ago. So we're really excited about him. And, and um, you know, the, some, some new guys. Uh, Vado Morse is a transfer from Mount St. Mary's. Uh, he's going to be really good for us. Uh, Jalen Hodge, a transfer from Louisiana Monroe. Uh, I think he's going to be great. Uh, TJ Taylor um, from Wyoming. Um, you know, um, Julian Wooden is a returning guy. I think excited about Mike Christmas, Javis Harvey. So, um uh, those are those are returning guys. Joel Mensa is a six ten guy from San Diego State who um, he's 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 really strong on the defensive end, but I think he really fits our style of play. He's a versatile big who can move. And uh, we have three freshmen, and I think all three freshmen have um, you know really grown here the last twenty or twenty five days. We've been around each other. Coach, let's talk about the CAA a little bit and, and, and really about some of the players. We talked about Matt Lewis and how he kind of tested the, the NBA waters and, and looking to be a prospect here as he gets ready for his senior year. And, and now we see some 
players that used to play in the CA having impacts in the bubble right now in the NBA, like a Drell Brantley for the Jazz and Devontae Kaycock for the Lakers. Uh, what does that say about this league as you enter in as a first-year coach, uh, even with players that possibly could be drafted coming up, both, you know, Nathan Knight and William Mary and Grant Riller at College of Charleston? Uh, what if, what if, has that really impressed you the most, some of the talent in this league? Uh, it's a very talented league, and uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous basketball league. And, and sometimes people get enamored with, um, you know, just power five teams and thinking about the ACSEC. Um, but it, it shows not only with those guys, you know, being really good pros. Um, it shows the guys are coming up. It shows the level of basketball. And that is great for everybody because we're all of us are recruiting. And that all of us are recruiting. And, you know, those programs are selling the fact that they had pros. But we're selling the fact that they were in a conference. You know, they were in a CEA. So, if you're good, the NBA is going to find you. And, um, and there's great evidence of that with CAA. And uh, there might be a couple more um, that, that were seniors last year get drafted. And I know Nathan Knight's a special player from William & Mary and missing Grant Reeler and, and what, what some other guys have done. So um, it just helps future guys come. So, so you know, hopefully every single year we're putting guys in the NBA. And I know that's Matt Lewis's dream. And, and he came back for a senior year to work towards that. Coach, you're also going into uh, – the program is going into a new building this year. Uh, what has the excitement been around that as we kind of get closer and closer to basketball season? Obviously, you know, fans and the fluidity of all that still up in the air, but there still has to be some general excitement as you guys have now kind of broken into your new home. Yeah, we can't wait. So uh, we're about two months from getting there full time. And um, I do know the construction workers are tired of me, like looping around there and walking around, peeking in. So um, they, they want to keep me away. But our guys are excited. They can't wait to play in there. It's going to be a special building. So the Atlantic Union Bank Center is going to be, I think, one of not just best in the CAA. It's going to be one of the best arenas in the country. And we got a passionate fan base. I know they want to get in there. I know they want to see where the program's going to go. And uh, a great, great home schedule. That we want to be able to play games in there. So uh, UVA comes. And right now they're still the defending national champions since we didn't crown one last year. And and some great in-state games. Um, Old Dominion's coming, George Mason coming, some former CAA teams, uh, Radford's here in the state of Virginia. So a uh, great schedule, uh, great building, and our guys are working hard. I mean, they want to put a good product on the floor and, and make an exciting place for everybody. Wrapping up today with the head coach of the Jamie Dukes, Mark Byington, and coach outside of COVID-19 being a headline this offseason for college basketball for our country. Also, this social injustice movement and Black Lives Matter. Uh, you being a new coach at JMU, what type of conversations have you had and your student athletes all together had in regards to the social injustice movement? Yeah, the, the hardest thing was, um, you know, for, for our team as a whole, was everybody was in different places when this was going on. And, you know, a lot of these things would have been great if we were around each other face-to-face -face and we could talk. And, and so um, less than 48 hours after uh, the George, George Floyd um, uh, death, we, we got together on a Zoom and did the best we could from guys all over the place. And, and you know, everybody talked and, and shared their opinion. And, and, you know, we tried to come up with a plan that we could do together as a team and they could do together. And um, – you know, my message to them in that very moment was that, that – and we all kind of were unanimous on this, that, that you know, violence, violence wasn't going to be the answer in this and then talk is not going to be enough. Like, talk is not going to change everything. So, so we got to put action into place. And uh, the guys on the team had some great things. Um, you know, we've, we actually – we watched um, some things on YouTube, some movies to make us all think and try to put us in action. And um, I told them, I said, whatever you guys want me to do to lead, I want to lead. And um, I want to be somebody that, that you know, just is, is in the background. You guys want me to do something. So, you know, voice it. You know, you know let, let's be on the forefront. Let's make change happen. And, and we've had some great, great talks. And now we're around each other every day. Um, you know, this isn't going to be something that was, you know, for us as a team that we talked about a couple of weeks ago and then we stop it. You know, this is going to be something that we're constantly working on every day. That's great, Coach. Thank you so much for sharing your uh, insights and things that you've been discussing with your team in regarding to the social injustice movement. And thank you for taking time to kind of share your summer, which I'm sure it's been a wild one for you. And uh, hope you and your family stay healthy along with your team. And hopefully we see the Dukes back on the court uh, fairly soon. That sounds good. All right. Thanks, Bobby, for having me.